First John chapter 5, verse 13. We're going to pull off one verse and pray for him tonight. I pray the Holy Ghost have his way. And I believe it's be a real encouraging message uh, to you. I was for me. And thank God for it. That song that brother sang there, to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm happy either way. I'll either labor, labor a little while and tell everybody I can about Jesus, do all I can for him, I wish is very minimal. I wish I could do more for him. Uh, but until then, I know he's coming. And when he gets there, I'll be there for all eternity. I'm excited about that tonight. And we need assurance. That's what I want to preach on tonight is assurance. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, the Bible reads, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray you'd help me tonight, God. Give me liberty, Father. I, I love you. I bless you. I praise you and thank you, Lord God. I walk with me, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. You made me see that. I want you to pay attention right there. Watch. Look at that Bible again right there at that verse. Look what it says. These things have I written unto, what's that next word? Look at him. Why, O you? These things have I written unto you that believe, right? Unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So John is saying, anybody that reads this, I'm writing this to you. But then watch what he says after this. The, the next three times that he's talking about you, he don't say you no more. Look what it says. It says that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye Amen. may believe on the name of the Son of God. To me, that's where it gets a little bit personal. Uh, that ye kind of sounds like me. So anytime you get in your Bible and you see that ye, why don't you just kind of say it like me? Yeah. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that me may know that me have eternal life and that me may believe on the name of the Son of God. As Christians, as uh, saved, born again Christians, we run into ruts where we doubt our salvation. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's because we need salvation and for, or because we need assurance. Uh, and sometimes you, you might need salvation. You might need saved, born again. Uh, but your spirit and your soul is saved, but your flesh is not. Therefore, we need assurance. Let me give you the definition of assurance. The definition is and there's three different points to this definition. And I'm going to glean for each, each one of them. Look, a positive declaration intended to give confidence, Amen. a promise. A declaration, assurance is a declaration intended to give confidence or a promise. Another example of this, defini of this word is confidence or certainty in one's own abilities. In one's own abilities. Or the state of being assured. Now a state is a time. A state, it's not something that's always there. That's all, I'm not always happy. I'm not always sad. And I'm not always mad. You get in states of feelings and emotions and, and troubles and things that we go through. I, can I tell you that assurance is not security? Assurance is not security. But we are secure. Yeah. If you're saved, born again, and for the record, saved, born again means you've repented of sin. If we say we're saved, or we're saved, born again, or we have had repentance, it's all the same thing. There's only one thing that sends mankind to hell, and it's rejection of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. That's saying, oh, not me. You, you deny him. You say no when he's drawing you, when he's, when he's dealing with your heart. You say no to the gospel. Uh, murdering don't send you there. Being a drug addict don't send you there. Uh, being a liar don't send you there. The only thing that sends mankind to hell is that he rejects the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel means good news. It wasn't that Jesus, the good news, uh, Dennis, wasn't that he could take five loaves of bread and two fish and, and feed multitudes of people. And it, it wasn't that he could raise the dead and it wasn't that he can make the blind to see the good news dad was that uh, Jesus rose on the third day it was the good news was that he died for mankind the God man the man that entered into the world born of a virgin I uh, died for our sinful flesh ain't you glad about that now let me give you the definition of security 
Because there's a lot of scallywags, if you will, out here uh, that preach that you can lose salvation. And you get a lot of that uh, in the charismatic movement, in your Pentecostal churches. Now, I'm not saying they're bad people because I believe a lot of them are saved. I believe most of them are saved. Uh, but the man that's pastoring them uh, is leading them the wrong way in their doctrine uh, and their exercising of gifts. Amen. Uh, now, security, you can't lose it. A lot of them men will teach you that you can lose salvation. You cannot lose salvation. Write it down that Brother Joshua Allen tonight on this Wednesday service told you that you cannot lose salvation. Here's what the definition of security is. The state of being free from danger or a threat. I'm free from a place called hell. I got under godly sorrow of my sin. I got under I got under conviction and I start fearing that I was on my way to hell and God saved my soul. And I put my trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. His righteousness was imputed to me. Therefore I just now am righteous. I am going to heaven. And no man can take it from me. No man could give it to me. Only God could do that and it's out of faith I am secured I am absolutely without the shadow of a doubt secured and if you've repented towards God and have your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ you are secure too says the word of God watch this another uh, meaning of the word security definition a watch it now listen really close a thing deposited or pledged as a guarantee of the fulfillment of an undertaking or the repayment of a loan. Jesus Christ put his blood on the mercy seat. Uh, Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price. He satisfied uh, what God needed for mankind's sin to enter in. It was the blood of Jesus Christ. It could not have been anything else. And he satisfied God's wrath with his own son's blood. He paid that debt. You can't pay it. Only God could do it. And then it says this too. The state of feeling safe, stable, and free from fear or anxiety. Uh, being saved, we ought to have a sense of not being scared and fearful. Though we do. Though we do. The devil's after the Christian. I believe that when a good sign of a Christian, of a mankind being saved, born again, is you start doubting and you start wondering, am I saved? Am I, did I really get the right thing? I don't act like him. I don't praise like her. I don't do the same things they do. Well, the fact of the matter is, is there's no big Holy Ghost and no small Holy Ghost, no boy Holy Ghost, no girl Holy Ghost. He's the same for us all. He is the exact same for us all. And once we have put our trust and faith in Jesus Christ, we are secure until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now here's the difference. Who's assuring themselves and who isn't? You've got to assure yourself. I'll give you Brother Josh's definition, uh, an uneducated boy's uh, definition of, uh, of assurance. Reminding. We need a reminding every now and then. I can't assure you. If God saved you, he's personal. Remember, to you that believe. But ye, 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 that's when it becomes personal. Now there's some things I can point you to that can help you to be assured daily of your salvation. We are secure. We will not lose it. God said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting, bless God, means everlasting. You cannot lose it. It's eternal. It ain't going nowhere. Right. Ephesians 4.30, watch this, says this. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. He said, ye are personally, hey, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby me are sealed until the day of redemption. I am sealed like a bag of potato chips. It ain't, it ain't open until you pop that thing. We are saved by our spirit and soul, but our flesh will not be saved until that day. The red, the ones that has died in the Lord will raise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. You cannot lose salvation. It says in Ephesians 1.13, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. 
not baptized, not speaking in tongues, not having dreams and visions, not doing all these things. He said, after that, ye heard the word of God and ye trusted. That's what it takes to have salvation. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. I thank God uh, that if some man didn't have to lay his hand on my head and tell me I had to speak weird, uh, shit about a Honda. That's what they, that's what they train people to say in these charismatic movement, which is growing and growing in our day and time. They train people by saying shit about a Honda, shit about a Honda, shit about a Honda, shit about a Honda. Things like that to get them to rattle their tongue. And you know, it's the same thing they do when they speak, teach you Spanish. You know, it's the same thing they do when they speak you French, when they teach you to speak French. They're trying to get your mouth to move and your tongue to move other ways. Man, I'm not saying these people ain't saved. But what I'm saying is that it takes hearing the word of God and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. And when you get saved, you will not and cannot lose your salvation. I thank God for that today. I do. There's a lot of craziness out here in this day and time. But I thank God I'm for sure that I'm sealed and secure. Amen. It's just like this. We need assurance every now and then. It's like a bank. You got a hundred bucks. I'm a broke boy. I don't have much money in the bank. I put a hundred bucks in that bank, and I don't use it. Two days later, I'm going to call it. It's secure, Brother Rod. It ain't going nowhere. But for some reason, I got to call and make sure it's still there. And then when I spend 20 bucks, I, after I spend it, I got to call and make sure that it was just 20 bucks that was took. An assurance. But it is secure. It's the same thing. You have a birthday party. You invite people over. And you've told everybody you've got all the decorations, everything's ready to go. It comes within the hour. Nobody's showing up. I'm saying, you know, you're, hey, you still come to birthday party? Okay, thanks. You still come to birthday party? We, we're, we're human. We're human. And we need assurance every now and then. We need to assure ourselves of our salvation. And we're going to get in tonight three points. Uh, that helps us to assure ourselves. Colossians 2.2 2 says this, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and into all riches. Look, being knit together in love, God is love, and into all riches, all riches of the full assurance of understanding. You are not enjoying the full riches of salvation here on this earth if you are constantly worried about salvation. If you are allowing the devil to haunt you and tell you you're lost and keep on worrying because you didn't get it, the devil will drive you nuts and he will not allow you to have joy in this walk with God. He wants to steal the Christian's joy from loving the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing what all God has for his children. The devil wants to stop you that, but God says, the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. Now watch it, to the mystery of God. Well, Brother Josh, why can't I get saved and, and Jesus just start appearing in front of my face and talking to me? It's a mystery that has been since the beginning of time. Men cannot be saved without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If God done it that way, everybody would get saved. But he said, straight and narrows the way, and few be there to find it, and brawls the way to destruction, and many be that go down there at. It's a mystery. But to you and I that are saved, it's a waiting game. We're waiting for Jesus to come back. And sure enough, he's coming back. Amen. We surely need assurance. This old boy here needs some assurance every day. I need it. Sometimes our heart needs assurance and our spirits need a reminding. Amen. Our flesh is weak. When we dip off into temptations of sin and when we disobey God by not reading his word and going to church and doing all the things we know we're supposed to do, it starts drawing doubts in our mind. And when you, so the second you give your mind over to a doubt, the devil's going to take that thing as far as he can with it. Which brings us to our first point. Go with me to Mark chapter 9, uh, verse 17. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. One of my favorite stories in the gospel, you find Jesus coming down after he transfigured in all his glory in front of, uh, in, in front of Peter and John. Amen. And Moses and Elijah appeared. And when he come down in Mark chapter 9, starting in verse 17, here's what the Bible says. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, 
which hath a dumb spirit. Let me stop right there. Uh, it says in one of the multitude. That's how God works. There'll be multitudes of people and God's there just over one person. He'll show up just over one person. That's how God is. Anyway, so Jesus come down off this mountain. This man has brought his son to him that has a dumb spirit. 18, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him and foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pinneth away. And I spake to that disciple, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they cannot. This man brought his son that has a dumb spirit to Jesus' disciples, and they could not cast him out. Can I tell you, there's some things that Brother Josh cannot do for you. There's some things that Brother Sonny can't do for you. There's some things the deacons can't do for you. There's some things you just got to call upon Jesus for. Watch. Verse 19. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming, and he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child, And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I got reading this over this earlier, and this first time it crossed my mind this way. Why did Jesus ask him, uh, how long has he had this spirit? Hey, afterwards, I believe this man, after he did get his son did get delivered from this, it was like God saying, if you would have believed a long time ago when your son was born, or if you'd have brought him to me a long time ago, if you'd have got personal with me a long time ago, uh, this could have took place a long time ago. Now watch it. 21 came unto him, 22. And oftentimes it has cast him, so this is the dad saying about his son, he said this evil spirit he has, Sometimes cast him into the fire, into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, watch it, if thou canst believe. Now watch it. All things are possible to him that what? Believe? Yeah. Amen. It says believe if. That believeth. He said, you can, look, you can believe Jesus Christ all you want, but until you start believing him every single day and all situations and everything you're going through, something might get done then. Yeah. Now watch, that believeth. And straightway the father and child cried out and said with tears, watch, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. He came out to Jesus. He came to God. He said, God, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. You ever been there? There's times in my life where I know I've seen God move. I've watched him, Brother Dennis, do some miracles in my life that no man can explain, Brother Sonny. But then sometimes I find myself right up on my knees. God, where are you at? What are you doing? I need you now more. Help down my unbelief, God. We need prayer. Yes. Yes. To assure ourselves every day, we need prayer. That was point number one. <laughs> See, anytime you read your Bible, this has helped me years ago. The Holy Spirit illuminated this to my mind. Every time you see me in dialogue, Jesus, in dialogue, consider it somebody praying. And that's kind of helped me in my prayer life. So I see this man praying. And he didn't get what he wanted until he come to Jesus believing. But see, there's sometimes we say we believe, but we're not going to believe until we get in the presence of God and beg God for what it is we need or want. God wants that from you and I. We need prayer. You need assurance every day. And the number one tool you've got, once you've gotten saved and repented towards God and faith in Jesus Christ, you must pray. If you're just reading your Bible, it ain't going to do no good. If you're just coming to church, it ain't going to do you no good. If you're just out witnessing, it ain't going to do you no good. I believe the number one thing, when you get born again, you will start talking to God. That's where it starts. That's, that is where it starts. Amen. you got to talk. It's like someone being educated. I had to be educated by God. I was dumb as a box of rocks. Ignorant and unlearned, but they knew it had been with Jesus, like Peter and John. And it, talk, it, it starts with talking. 
Like a teacher when you go to school. How do we talk to God, Brother Benny? We pray to God out of faith, amen. I couldn't tell you, I could not imagine where I'd be at this day and time in my life if I didn't hit my knees and ask God to help me and spill my heart and spill my problems and tell him everything that's going on. Hey, I'd probably be in some insane house by now, but thank God there's a God in heaven that if we'll just pray to him, he will assure you, sis, that he's still on the throne and that he's still, he still saved you and he's still there and wants to give you life up uh, more abundantly. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says pray without ceasing. You and I must always pray. Now watch this. Remember assurance the definition. The first, there was three different ones. And the first one says a positive declaration intended to give confidence a promise. You want confidence in your salvation? Start praying to God. If you want confidence in your salvation... Start praying to God more often. Not just, Lord, thank you for this food. Amen. Let's eat. Be personal with Him. Tell Him all your problems, all your cares. And He'll meet you there. Amen. Assurance. Turn with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, Jesus Christ. He has been betrayed, delivered up, smitten, afflicted, numbered with the transgressors, hung on a cross, took down and laid in a tomb and rose on the third day. Now the church of the living God is being established. And what we find here is a man named Philip in Acts chapter 8 starting at verse 26. Here's what the Bible says. And the angel of the Lord spake. That's Jesus. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is the desert. So this man Philip, he is, he is at an, uh, he's at a uh, what do you call them? Uh, he, he's preaching. He's at a revival, if you would. And he's preaching to all these people. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God tells him to leave. Tells him to leave. And instead of reading it for time's sake, I'll just, I'll just tell you what happened. He tells him to leave, and you're going to find this Enoch. And he's gonna, you're going to find him on a chariot. And I want you to go to him. And he went to him. And here's what it says. Uh, in verse 30, And Philip ran thither to him. And heard, watch it, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, that's Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And the Enoch said back to Philip, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired, that stood out to me today, desired. He desired, Philip, that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the Enoch answered Philip and said, I pray thee to whom thou speakest, the prophet, this man, this of himself, or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached to him a Jesus. So while Philip is in his Bible, preaching his Bible, the Spirit spoke to him and said, go meet this man. And when he gets there, he's reading his Bible. Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I least some man guides me? And then he started preaching to him Jesus. And after he preached him Jesus, the Bible says they departed from each other. Now watch this. In 36, in Acts chapter 8, verse 36, it says, and as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the Enoch, the man that was in the chariot, see here is water? What do hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest, yeah. if thou believest with all thine heart, and thou mayest, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible says with mouth confession is made unto salvation. This man was guided in the word of God. He got under conviction of his sin. He said that he believed Jesus was the son of God. If he was to drop dead and croak right there, he would have been in the presence of God. But instead, he threw in that water and the spirit led him to be dunked in that water. And then the Bible says that Philip, God honored it so much. God honored it so much much uh, that when he dunked him down in that water up uh, he was transported Philip was uh, to a different land yeah. ain't that something how does that work I don't know but God sure does and it happened 
But I want you to notice this. This man was reading the Word of God. You want to be assured? Read the Bible. Read the Word of God. You need it daily. We have got to pray every day. And you have got to read that Bible every single day. You got to do it. You got to. But here's what blesses my soul. Watch this. This is what blesses my soul. It says, while Philip's preaching, it says, and the angel, <laughs> and the angel of the Lord spake to Philip. God is omnipresent. He's here right now. He's going to be here all the time. And he's going to be across the country all the time. God's everywhere. He knows all things. But this is how personal God is if you're personal with him. While Philip's preaching this, he says, preacher, stop. I've got some boy over here that's reading the scriptures and don't know anything he's doing. Don't know nothing about what he's reading. And I want to help him. I want to save him. God blessed him and assured that Enoch because he had his nose in the book. Because he had his nose in the scriptures. I tell you what, sometimes I'll wake up and I'll get so busy and I hadn't had a time yet. I've, I do my little devotions and things really quick on the phone. And there's some times where things just picked up so fast. I hadn't got to dig into that book yet, Brother Dennis. And everything's falling apart and I'm mad as a hornet and nothing's going right. And then I get inside the book uh, and all of a sudden I come out and I'm okay. Uh, I mean, it's the craziest thing, uh, but it's real. Amen. You want assurance of your salvation? Keep praying and read your Bible. Read your Bible. You need it every day. Now watch it. Remember the second definition, and we're almost done, of assurance. Confidence or certainty in one's own abilities. If you'll get inside this whole book, if you'll get in here, you'll see what you're capable of. You'll see what you can do. And God will show you what you can do. God can do some mighty things. He told his disciples these things I've done. You'll do greater works than that. Hey, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to see multitudes saved. But you got to pray. We got to read the book. Amen. We got to stay in this whole book. Praise God. And our last point, turn with me to Acts. Just go over a couple pages to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. You now find Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas have been preaching the word of God. They've been preaching the word of God and then they get took captive. They make them, they beat these men for preaching the word of God. And then they take them, Andy, and they put them in prison for preaching uh, the word of God. Now look with me in Acts chapter 16, verse 22. It says, And the multitude rose up against them. The magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many strikes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. They told the jailer to keep them safely. <laughs> Who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Now watch this, praise God. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners Heard them. I wrote right there, worship allows miracles. We'll keep reading. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. All the doors. You get to worshiping. God starts opening up doors. Praise God. Watch it. It says, and all the doors were open, praise God. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself. This prisoner, he, the earthquake came, the doors flew open. They told this prisoner, you better not let these boys go. And it said he would have killed himself. Uh, oh God, but look, supposing that the prisoners had fled, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he cried, called for a light and sprang up and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Watch it. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy household. He didn't say start speaking in tongues. He didn't say start tithing. He didn't say start preaching. He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. You need assurance of your salvation. 
need to worship more. They were worshiping. Pray, read your Bible, and worship. It's that simple. These boys were worshiping Dennis after being beat and thrown in jail. They're still praying, Brother Sonny. They're still singing songs, sis. They're praising God. And God opened up the, he did what he did and opened up the doors. And when the doors are opened up, look, we so easily say, God, open up this door for me. God, open up this door that I can. When God opens up doors, it's not for you. It's for souls to get saved. I thank God for that. When God opens up doors, it is for souls to be saved. See, this jailer didn't just get saved, but his whole household got saved. Keep on praying. They're going to come to Christ. God cannot lie. We need worship. You and I must worship God in the spirit and in the truth. Brother Sonny, it says in John chapter 4, verse 24, uh, 23, that he seeketh such. God seeketh such to worship him. God is seeking. When he's in our church right now, he wants to know who is seeking to worship me. Who can I bless? Who can I help? Who can I take to the next level? Whose family can I save? Who's here for me? Not to be seen. Not for religion. Not for routine. But who's here for me? And God will open up doors. And he'll save souls. He's proved it time and time again. We need worship. You want assurance of your salvation? Keep praying. Read your Bible and worship God. <coughs> he seeking such. It excites me that God is seeking people to worship Him. Amen. <clears throat> Wonder why we're not getting aware and doing anything? We're not worshiping. Hebrews 10, 22. And if you pray and you'll read your Bible, you'll want to worship. Now watch it. Remember, the last, the last meaning of assurance was this. The state of being assured. Reminded. I am reminded of my salvation when I'm headed to church. When I'm picking people up. When I'm thinking about what I'm going to preach. When I'm thinking about the songs that are going to be sang. Worship. It's a state that you and I need. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, 22, and we'll be done. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Let us, listen, let us draw near to God with full assurance of our faith. How do we do that? By praying, reading the Bible, and worshiping. That's how you draw close to God. Watch it. 23 says this, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast, fast, excuse me, the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised. There's never, if you read the Gospels, there's not one person, I've studied it, there's not one person that came to Jesus and He didn't heal them. And He didn't do what He said He was going to do. And He didn't help him, except for the ones that had a cold heart, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the only ones, but the ones that came to Him wanting Him received. 1 John 3, 19, 21 says this, And hereby we know that we are of the truth. Brother Silas, if you'll come. And get a song ready for us, brother. We'll probably play Amazing Grace if we can. 1 John chapter 3, 19 through 21 says this. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure of our heart before Him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if your heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Every now and then, my heart's condemned by my own thoughts, by my own flesh. But it cannot be condemned. It cannot be for those that are set free, they're free indeed. We are secure to the day of Jesus Christ, but we need some assuring. 1 John 4.13 says this, hereby, hereby know we that we dwell in Him and He in us, because He has given us of His Spirit. Watch this. If I give you a $100 bill, and you put that thing in your pocket, a little bit later you're going to dig in your pocket, you know it's there, but you're just going to check, right? And then a little later on you're going to check again, you get to the store before you buy something, you're going to make sure it's there. You know it's there. When you get saved, you know He's there. He's there, and every now and then you got to go digging, go praying, go read your Bible, go to church, witness to somebody, worship God. Amen? You can worship God cutting your grass. 1 John 5, 10 through 13, and it gets us back to our verse, to our text. It says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Have you made God a liar? 
Because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. This is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And in this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life, and he that hath not the son, God hath that life. Look, it's so simple. A child can understand it. Amen. If you trust Jesus Christ, you're saved. And if you don't, you're not. If you've rejected, and your life will prove it one way or the other. When you got Jesus, he'll change you. 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Listen, Christian, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You can't lose salvation, but we do need a shirt of it. Read your Bible every day, pray to God every day, and worship God every day. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you tonight. And thank you, God, that you have sealed us to the day of redemption. God, I pray if there is a lost soul in our midst, I pray you'd draw them. I pray you'd save them. And Lord, we thank you for your presence with us. And Lord God, I pray for any Christian that's here that's battling salvation and battling the assurance of it all. That they settle that account tonight, God. And Lord, give them that peace that passeth all understanding. Give us a spirit and a burden to stay in prayer, to stay in your word, and to stay worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we love you. We fall short, but we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.